Welcome back to Lake Lock Build. My name is John and the weather has finally broke. And so now we are all hands on deck to start working on the roof. So if you guys haven't seen the videos prior to this, we're building an ICF house and we've gone from the foundation to the basement to the first floor. And now we are going to start focusing on the roof and we are going to do a concrete roof. So let's go in and take a look. As you can see, the wall scaffolding and bracing that we had for the floor or for the walls here, we left up. We took out the triangle bracing now that the concrete has cured out. And now we are going to work on this edge piece right here. And this edge piece is going to be a piece that's going to go up 10 inches. And so our light deck is going to sit on the top up here. In just a second, I'll climb up here and give you guys even more detail of how this is going to work. It will sit on the edge of it. The light deck will sit on top of that. The concrete will go over the top and then down. So, okay, I'll try to go through this as quick as possible because we're, we've got the saw running down here. So let's scoot forward here. So what we have here is the light deck is going to sit right here, right there and then it'll be 10 inches tall come to here and then on the top of the light deck is another four inches of topping and so we want to make sure that we that the concrete comes all the way to out here so we'll put this form up this comes up 10 inches it's a half block and that'll keep the concrete from pushing out and then this four inch topping slab we'll <coughs> put two by 12 on the outside here the concrete will actually, the finished concrete will be out here. And the reason that it's done is that whatever water that we have here, we want it to go on the outside of the house. If we, otherwise it would be, it might try to migrate in between this and the edge of it. Even though that we're gonna have Zypex in there, we might have water right up against the edge. So we bring it all the way out here so that our top is actually a whole waterproof cap on the top of the house. So I'm gonna lean over the edge here a little bit so you guys can see the bracing that has started. I'm gonna scoot out here. So for right now, for the first one is gonna be this two by four that's every four feet. And that'll keep this section here from getting pushed out. So up here, of course, is going to be the railing. This is the ledger board or the, the banding I was telling you, to you guys about to go around it. And uh, she's looking good. You can see all of the bracing that was for our wall core has been taken down and is now stacked. And so today's work will be the inside band for the light deck to sit on and then all of the bracing that will hold up the light deck before they pour. So we're going to put some on the subfloor here that goes to the floor in the basement. And I'll show you that in just a little bit. And that is just so that when we have that much weight of concrete pouring before it sets up, that we don't have a deflection on this floor. And so everything stays nice and level as that concrete dries. And then we can come back 30 days later and pull all that out. So let's go up there real quick and I'll show you what it looks like. Now this is the this is where the concrete will go against this instead of back here the concrete will go all the way out to the edge and so that way when we have our waterproofing and our edging the water will go all the way over the edge of the house versus back in here and might want to try to run down the outside there. Got our railing put up. Looks good. Very strong. Every four feet, they have it all screwed together versus nailed, which is really nice. All of the bending here along the edge, you can see as it goes all the way around, is now complete. So we'll walk through here real quick and let you guys show you, or let you guys see. So this is the support every four feet for the light deck to sit on that's up there and that goes all the way around the house and what's nice is that when we get done the wall that will be right here between the garage and the house it needs to be a two by six wall and the reason is is I have some 
my ERV piping and my different pieces of conduit and stuff that are going to be coming through here. I need a little bit wider. And then also up here, I want to have a rooftop deck. Well, my rooftop deck, I also want a hot tub. And so with that, I like the ability that this will be a load-bearing wall because we have a concrete wall below it. So with the big hot tub on top, with the extra weight in that small footprint, it's nice to put it right over the top of our load-bearing wall. The other thing is, is that we can run our conduit for the power for the hot tub straight up there and pop it in. And hopefully we can set the hot tub, edge of the hot tub right over that conduit so it pops up on the edge of the uh, inside there, on the edge of the hot tub, and you'll never see it. So it looks like that hot tub just sits there in the middle of the road. Okay, let's go over a little bit of a process of how our spider web of bracing is going to go. So we'll start with the temporary to get the two by sixes in line, and then we'll go back and show you how the vertical pieces go in. So we need to get this two by six along this line right here. So we have the T once they set the elevation on top, and they do that with a string line, and they'll make sure that it has that crown that we were talking about in the garage. And so they'll put the T flush there, comes down to the floor, and then down here, they use a two by four here, and they put the T on top of that two by four. Alright, well, our Superman has arrived and our light deck is here. So let's take a look. Oh my gosh. Let's go over here up on the hillside so you guys can see all the. So, this is what is the roof will consist of. So, these are the panels that will lay flat. And then these pieces will lay in between each one of, just like that. Time to uh, unload. We are now on day number six of the forming for our roof concrete pour. And today is an absolutely gorgeous morning. So David is up here and they're working in this little area that is right in here where you have this span where it actually cantilevers over the front door and then we'll form it right here at the edge. And so right now the guys are cutting some poles and I'll show you all about that here in just a second when we crawl up here. So we're, we're cutting out some holes here so that, uh, you know, we'll be able to fill that in with concrete all the way over around this little inset here. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, then we'll be able to just go on across. We've got uh, three more forms to put in. Then we'll pull them all up tight, put the steel in. And we'll start putting the top hats. Walk around here with all me. All right. <clears throat> so these top hats are what makes the joist okay. right here. It's what makes the joist tall enough. To do our span so you put the top hat in the, in the in the middle here if you wanted a longer span you just stack another one on top they will, they will tell you they'll specify exactly how high it's got to be but it makes the joist taller and the more that you span the more that you're going to have to increase your steel sure and if you start spanning too much then you do what's called post tensioning and they have a cable that goes through and that requires some engineering uh, but has a cable that goes through it kind of sags in the middle and you tension it sort of like the uh, golden gate bridge yeah that so makes complete gear. sense yeah. well thank you so we much need, uh, we just need the one like this we actually get glued down we'll take spray foam put them on glue them down into place and then the 
the top deck is going to have rebar on it every two feet. Yeah. To make it. Better. Okay, so just pretty much just like the garage floor. Yeah, it's like the garage floor. It's the same span as the garage floor. Uh, so the only thing we're doing is making it wider. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. looks like we're ready for our next one. Yep. So let's go. Let's go over here and catch this. And watch how it's done. Can you get still water from the rain yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so stand over here. They're going to slide that over the opening. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Get it in the middle just a little bit. Let me climb. Pull it in the middle here, man. There we go. So the, the pieces come in 10 foot sections, and you actually order the exact measurement that you need, and they ship them to you in the exact measurement that you need. Oh, I see. Yeah, so, so from, from there over to there is the 10 foot section. So 10 foot, a 10 foot, and then for us a four foot nine section. 24 foot nine is our span. Okay. Um, and so we cut this one apart. And in this channel, there's actually steel that gets put in. And then you can see when they join the two pieces together, the 10 foot, and in our case, the four foot nine, there's a little splicer that they use, a yeah, little washer, and then there's a, the steel channel. That screw goes all the way down into the steel channel. And that's what holds them together. Okay. And it looks like, you know, you got all of these joints. How in the world would that ever hold concrete? But as soon as you start putting the concrete in, it just, it really, it pulls it all together. And then we will foam these gaps right here so that the concrete doesn't fall out onto the I see. Yeah, that, I uh, got you. Other right. than that, uh, it's, it's really the force of the concrete and the weight of the concrete that holds it all together. Okay, so you wanted to show the keyway on the right. ends, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So this is what is called the joist, and when we add that top hat to it on both sides, that's what gives the joist the depth that it needs. Yeah. And in our case again, because we're spanning 24 feet 9 inches, um, it's going to require a total of 14 inches from the bottom here and to the top of our concrete. Okay. 14 inches total. And so this is the this was the key way that you were talking about right. from end to end that so, they slide into. You know, you would you would call it a tongue and a groove. So right. there's the groove on this side, the tongue on that side, and it just fits together. And again, you'd think, well, it, it should have something more substantial than that. But once the concrete starts, you know, pulling it all together, that's more than sufficient to keep the concrete from running out uh, onto the next level. And of course, you got the got the top hat on top of this joint too. Yeah, that's true. That holds it together. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you taking the minute just to uh, to show us what, hey, what it, it looks like. Hey, Quan. So I'm trying to document all of this, these pieces going together that these guys, and this is the first time that I've actually been up at what is going to be very close to our view from up here to our finished grade. I gotta turn around and show this to you guys. Good Lord. There's the Highway 13. That's the bridge right over there that you can see. They shoot the fireworks off right there. Oh, this is going to be gorgeous. What a view. All right, so we'll come back and check these guys, um, check their work here in a little bit. The next piece is that after they do that, is they're going to take all the rebar that is on the sides. They'll bend that down, make a, make a right turn or right angle here and go on top. But, they have to put a two foot by two foot grid of half inch rebar and it will be on the stands. It'll be just like the garage floor. So as you can tell, we have the T's that we we're talking about. And so each T, the top has that piece there and then that piece across. And they both follow right under that two by six. And that allows the transfer of the weight 
down to the floor below. In this section right here is actually the garage. We've left some of those down below to hold that just to make sure. And then over here where we have the wood floor, we have the sections that spread that load out. Same things up there. We are spaced four feet there to there, four feet there to there to make sort of a grid pattern. And that is how it looks. Going to the basement now, show you the same style of bracing that is down here, which is gonna transfer the weight from the roof to the first floor all the way to the slab. So we have our joist, of course, but we want to make sure that we don't have any deflection in the joist so that we have our 4x4 grid that matches the 4x4 grid upstairs. Happens to hit in the span, so we'll, we go around that span to make sure that we don't have any squeezing or any deflection that will might transfer on up and that our floor, you know, our roof has this. We don't want any of that and we don't want any of this to be squeezed too much. But this looks really good. The guys did a really good job. Back in here, which was the garage floor pour, we've left this here, even though this is structurally sound now because it's been more than 30 days. We'll leave these here just in case because we have so much weight. We don't want any deflection of any sort. And uh, David's really good about being safe and he really knows his product really well and he really trusts his workers. But overall, you can see him. He's here on site. He's actual owner. He's here on site. He's watching all the details to make sure that nothing is overlooked. Makes me really comfortable to have him here and have him doing the work. It really does.